Appetite for the Unnatural. 2G, destroy target artifact or enchantment, you gain 2 life. There's the shatter I wanted. Bing. Yep, super awesome. Instants are great. Uh, you're gonna blow out vehicles with this a lot, etc, etc. Arborback Stomper, 3GG, 5, 4, Trample, ETB, gain 5 life. This thing is sweet. Jeez, I'm not losing this game. Yeah, I, I like these cards where it's like... like You're playing something? Yeah, like you, you were just... You were behind for a long time, and you're playing this like dopey 5 drop. Have some life. You know what? Have some more life. I just have a bunch of life. Have a ball. <laughs> yeah, this thing's sweet. It kind of reminds me of um, Gear Get Good Gladeheart, whatever the Gladeheart was, the two two for three with landfall gain two life, where it's just like gnarling uh, something. Yeah, yeah. It's like this card is, or uh, this color is unplayable because the format's so fast and aggressive. But this one card makes it all worthwhile. In a card that like no one would play except two months went by. Yeah, and... Grazing Gladeheart is the name of the card. Yeah, like, like that card was like the answer that everybody had all along. Like you had the magic in you all along. <laughs> people, are, people are pointing out that this is uh, uh, the second coming of Thrag Tusk. Not quite. <laughs> it does have that magic for toughness. Yeah, that's that's what Thrag Tusk was missing. Missing, I think. Well, I mean, it kind of was. <laughs> Ilion, thank you for the uh, host there. Architect of the Untamed. Two G. Two three. Landfall. No. It is not landfall. Just like that other thing wasn't affinity for artifacts, this is not landfall. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Wrong way. Uh, whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, which I repeat, I'm gonna re-emphasize this, that is not landfall, Greg. Stop no, telling me- Didn't have landfall and it was in the landfall set. <laughs> Stop telling me that this is landfall. It's not landfall. Yeah, and they should have changed it maybe, I don't know. Emissary of the Sleepless like wasn't morbid. You're just wrong, Greg. What if they put landfall in the reminder text and it'd be like the most most weird thing ever? The inverted flavor or yeah, in, so like <laughs> inverted reminder text. <laughs> landfall. <laughs> I love that. Dude, that would be I they should do that. Yeah, that would be awesome. Anyway, two three for three. We still, we still hear you, old players. You know. Yeah, yeah. Two three for three. Uh, landfall get an energy. Pay three six seven eight. Make a six six. This actually doesn't give you that much energy. Like, it gives you, like, three, and then if it stays in play, then sure, like, you get more throughout the game for every land, but, like, it doesn't actually give you, like, a burst of energy, like... And no, that... and it's not even a big payoff for energy, either. Like, a 6-6 six, 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 six thing that can be killed by artifact things, it can be chumped, it can be bounced, it, it can just be blocked or raced or whatever. Like, th this is not great at giving you energy, or... I, I think this is going to be, like, just a filler three drop in your limited deck that uses your energy well, and it'll give you some good energy while being filler. Yeah, it, it, you know, it's like a, um, it's like a new, you know, one of those like uh, meal replacement shakes. Yeah. Why can't this just be six energy for a six six? Like why eight? It's so dumb. Or or if it's an if it's eight energy, give it trample. I don't know. Not a fan. Armorcraft Judge three G three three, ETB. Draw a card for each creature you control with a plus and plus one counter on it. All right, so I was wondering where these things were because the plus and plus one counters I was told were relevant, but we haven't like really seen that much, but apparently this is uh, a green thing. This guy is not an artificer. I don't care. I don't, I, I don't care what's going on. This guy is not. <laughs> He's an elf. He's sitting on a rhino. He's not making artifacts as far anywhere near this location. His ability has nothing to do with artifacts. In fact, his ability is anti-artifacts because it wants you to make plus plus one counters instead of servos. Yeah, it's like, it's like he's making like uh, uh, you know uh, like enhancements to his body through nature. We're using I don't know. That yeah. doesn't make. Sense. Yeah, I agree. This thing is not an artificer, but also it's pretty great. Yeah, this is my favorite card in the set. I've said that twice so far, but there's like five. At least twice. A tune with ether. G, sorcery. Search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, get two energy. All right, so lay of the land, get two energy. Super good rate for energy, and lay of the land is already, like, borderline playable with, uh... I mean, you need, like, a lot of upside. I mean, Traverse has pretty absurd upside for you to play lay of the land, you know? I mean, I'm playing Traverse in a million years. I, I mean, I'm talking about limited, you know? Like, I'm never not going to uh, play... Oh, yeah, yeah. In limited, this is great. Especially if you're trap uh, splashing, which it does seem like there's some decent splash options in the set. It's also the kind of card that you can 
somewhat rely upon getting late because it will be somewhat undervalued by the average player. Yeah. I think that like uh, w when it's good in a person's deck, they might not realize it right away. People are really, really hesitant to play like the 15 lands double lay of the land deck. Sure, especially because like, uh, you know, they, they've been burned before and also like it just, they might not be as committed to that strategy or might not realize how good two energy is in their deck uh, it, when taken in, in, in its entire context. Yeah. So, so I think just like the, the draw card uh, creature can't block, this is going to be one of those late pickups that's going to be great. Yep. She looks like she's wearing a kabuki mask in the art. Moving on. It looks like just like just like an actual skin, like just like a skin, a skin cream. Yeah. Yeah, she's opening her pores. Blossoming defense, G, instant. Turn creature you control gets plus two, plus two, and gains hexproof until end of turn. So this is an insane trick slash retrick slash avoid fate and almost certainly constructible in something like Infect. Better against Spellskite. That's huge. Yeah. I didn't even think, I, I didn't notice that until just reading it now because I, I love this card when I first saw it. But anything that, that is this way that, that never, like, they don't make many anti-hexproof cards. Anti-Spellskite cards, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, no, this thing is, um, especially for, uh, for the sort of newest iterations of the Infect deck that are sort of better at getting in like four Infect and then yeah, three like Infect and you know, it's really good like in that. Normal. Yeah, because that was always the problem with mutagenic growth. Like the first mutagenic growth is so bad, but the second one is so good that you need to play four. Um, but this thing might box that out or just, you know, play alongside it. Bristling Hydra, two GG, four three, ETB, three energy. Pay three energy, get a plus one plus one counter, put a plus one plus one counter on this, it gains hexproof until end of turn. So this is just a 5-4 hexproof, assuming they don't kill it in response to the ETB trigger. It's, uh, yeah, and, and because it has three toughness, every spell can do it. Right. Yeah, you have to, they have to have played their hill giant for you to play this thing that's or ultimate trump. you could have already had energy. Yes, if you also already had three energy. You like play this and they respond to the trigger and you respond or they just or you like activate it at an at a time where they're like haha idiot i'm gonna use my removal spell and then you're just like yeah okay this instant that gives me energy or whatever yeah yeah um yeah this thing is just like there's not much to say about it it's a huge troll it's you're gonna want to pick this up yeah it's uh it's a really good card moving on commencement of festivities 1g Fall. Prevent all the combat damage that will be dealt to players this turn. So you get your favorable blocks in and then... Man, I hate these versions of this card. What? No, I love these versions of this card. I like the ones where it's all upside for me. I mean, this one's pretty close to all upside for you. Yeah, it's not it's, safe passage, yeah, but, but it's... Unconditional love. Yeah, you want, you want safe passage. I want, like, all non-green creatures. Something really, like, abrasively obvious. <laughs> Has there been a constructed relevant... Oh, the chat's already beat me to it. Yeah, Miss Cutter Hydra and Pelucranos, uh, and uh, the XGG one. Um, yeah, I don't know. Fogs with upside are always like something that I keep in mind for sideboards, especially when there's a, a lot of like overrun effects or whatever. Um, and just in general, if there's a lot of racing or going wide, you can get a lot of utility out of this out of the board. You don't usually want to main deck Fogs though. Yeah. Cole Prowler, six mana, six six. Poor they Crawworm. They keep insulting Crawworm. Poor, ever. poor Craw Crawworm. was my first ever magic card. As a true yep. fact, as a true AJ Soccer magic fact. I, I my first bad trade in Magic was when I gave my brother a plateau for a Crawworm. Well, plateau doesn't attack for six, so I don't see how that's. Total power and toughness ten. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a good rate. And I, you know, I didn't even regret it until like far later in life. Yeah, it took you like a decade to figure it out. <laughs> it four years. Um, that's, that's not an extra. I, I regretted it only because I, I knew it was worth a little bit more money. But like, it was clear to me that the card wasn't good. That uh, Plateau wasn't good. Yeah, and Carlin clearly is. And that's enough said. Yeah, and my first magic card ever. So every time they do this, it breaks my heart. But also, this thing is like pretty unplayable, I'm pretty sure. Um, uh, it, it's always funny that like versions of this, if it doesn't have trample, it's like, 
how your deck needs to play this, jeez. Yeah, well, sometimes it's like Alpha Tyranax was totally legit, right? Oh, yeah. But I this mean, thing it, is in an environment with like servos and the format's a lot more aggressive. There's a lot less removal and life gain. Like, If it had reverse menace, it would be like, it'd be hilariously average, you know, like, like the one where, you know, you can only block with one creature. It would be like hilariously not what it needs. I think that that would be funny. Wait, say that again? Uh, you know, like like a, the Rhino where it's like uh, three green and three, uh, the two green and three, but for like, you know, you can only block with one creature, it's a four. Oh, four. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I think it would have been like hilariously irrelevant. Like, it would have been a funny card to include. Yeah, the inverse menace on a thing that's just going to get chumped twice and then they die. Yeah. I, I would have appreciated that, yeah. Funny. Libel Intel's trying to get us to play each other on Skype. That's not going to happen. Uh, Creeping Mold. I have a story about this card as well. Um, so my first card was Crawl Worm, which I got years before I actually learned how to play Magic. And then um, when I first learned how to play Magic, my sister and I got like the Portal uh, intro decks or whatever. And we traded before we learned how to play the game, just because we're degenerates and children. And I traded her... Uh, some Pegasus card, whatever the Pegasus was, probably like a 1-1 one, one for two flying. And um, and I traded my that thing for her Creeping Mold uh, because it was, she liked unicorns and whatnot. Uh, and because I thought that Creeping Mold saying it could do, like, not only does it kill something, but it could kill like a bunch of things. I'm like, I don't know the rules of this game, but I know English and this thing's probably sweet. Yeah, like, like this is three out of the four card types, right? I didn't know what card types were, but I was real excited about Creeping Mold. Plus, the art was creepy. So I was really happy with that trade. And then we learned how to play Magic after that. And luckily, well, you didn't learn Banding for, for several years. Yeah, I didn't learn Banding for, like, seven years. Well, yeah, no one else did, too. It was, it was, like, one of those games where, like, there's no tutorial, but it's really fun. So people, like, crowdsource how to play, like, Pokemon Go in the beginning. You just shit talking no. Pokemon Go? I thought we were both. I I enjoy those games. Remember, I'm I'm from the era of, of Nintendo RPGs. You know the original kind where they don't they say good luck. Yeah, they yeah, say, yeah. You're on your quest. You're a wizard. We think. Do it. <laughs> yeah, you're a wizard or whatever. Go. <laughs> it doesn't have a name. There's doors, and this is not. A, this is a map. Trust yeah, me. yeah. Map. You're a boy. This this strange relative just woke you up. Have fun. A red demon breathes fire. Took your girlfriend, wife. We don't really explain it very well. Yeah, yeah. Took <laughs> took a female, and you're a male. Good luck. Yeah, and, and you have armor uh, if you want it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Here's a sword. <laughs> yeah, don't forget, uh, and if, you, if you forget to pick it up, then that's on. <laughs> it's like you're, you're, uh, you're what? Twelve years old now? Yeah. Here's a sword. Goodbye. <laughs> Dude, we need to we need to do that uh, that old like RPG let's play thing that I've been planning for years. I would. I, I mean, I would. I, yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. It's on me. I know. We'll figure it out. For the first time ever, I can blame you for, for not planning something. This is I know. Hard. No, well, I, I mean, I'm, honestly, I, I live for these moments. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. You give me so much. I woke up this morning to uh, a phone notification that had an overdraft fee. So, Motherfucker. uh, yeah. <laughs> so, They're charging you more of what they know you don't have. <laughs> exactly. What? It, how does it make sense it, it, it's only to charge me money for not having enough money? It's Listen, guys, I'm trying. A bit about profit, which is like you know not negative in itself, but like on every other like way of thinking about it, it's just like very weird <laughs> and strange that that a human would do this to another human. Yeah, it's bad. Like, um, it's not like you did it on purpose, and yeah. they know you did. not Obviously, you're not trying to do this here on purpose. And no. Weird. Yeah. So the, my my point about that is that you know priorities are a little uh, a little yeah, out of shape for for let's play shows right now. But anyway, creeping mold. Um, there's Demolish and Creeping Mold, so I would not be surprised if there ended up being some sort of Mulvani Acid Moss type LD ramp deck um, in Standard. As for Limited, it's obviously great. Because I wish it was a kill Planeswalker or land. There's got to be some card that... I mean, like Nisa, which we'll get to very soon, is uh, a good like top end for that. Yeah. Uh, Cultivator of Blades, 3GG, 1-1 Fabricate 2... 
When it attacks, you may have other attacking creatures get plus X plus X until in the turn where X is the Cultivator Blade's power. So this is the same thing as the white one and the black one, right? The Fabricate actually matters because of the way that the ability is. Right. Problem with this one is they printed this card at three mana and it was still bad. <laughs> like Wild Hunt Master or something? Yeah. Yeah, so like this card was bad at three mana and it, like not kind of bad, like really bad. Yeah, the, the, like, the like, Beastmaster or whatever. Yeah, the hard time like... playing in limited bad. Yeah. Well, this card is like a little better. Well, yeah, this thing, this thing, it costs two more, but it's, um, it, 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 the, the, the duality of it is what you're paying for, right? Like the option to go like, oh, what my token deck needs right now is an army in a can versus what my token deck needs right now is an overrun. The problem is if you go into overrun mode, it just dies. And if you go into token mode, then like, you're not really helping yourself out too much. Yeah, you you gotta like this it has to be enabled by like your other flicker or return your spell your your hand kind of spells or like you gotta make tokens and then just have a pump spell. Right. Like attack trigger on this. Yeah, you have to yeah you have to make tokens and then pump this thing. Which I mean, maybe that's good, but the problem is that it just costs five and like it doesn't actually like really do a, a lot. Like it doesn't like three one ones is not exactly like prime time. Yeah. Yep. It's not cloud go. <laughs> no, we say that we've said that a lot in this set review. It's not. It's no cloud goat. Dubious challenge is one of my least favorite cards of all time. Three G. Look at the top ten cards of your library. Exile up to two creature cards from among them. Then shuffle your library. Target opponent may choose one of those, one of the exiled cards, and put it onto the battlefield under his or her control. Put the rest onto the battlefield under your control. Why on earth is this thing in a legal magic set? Just put this in your commander. You can't have collected company around forever, dude. But like, this isn't like a fixed collected company. This is just a nonsense card. This is an absolute nonsense card. Why even, why do they bother? Just, you know. I don't mind this card existing, but like, who opens this at rare and is excited? Like, literally it's, zero? It's, it's dubious at best. <laughs> Dude, it would be a challenge to find some sort of playability for this thing. Just put it in a commander set or a, or a conspiracy or whatever so that I don't have to look at it. Yeah, yeah you have to talk me off the ledge. <laughs> ledge me a hand. You're, you're weak, you're tired. You're... Uh, durable handicraft. 1G enchantment whenever a creature enters the battle, whenever a creature, not an artifact, interesting. Enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay one if you do. Put a plus plus one counter on that creature. That's already like pretty legit. 5G, sacrifice this, put a plus plus one counter on each creature you control. Oh, this is actually a, a cycle. I didn't quite realize at first that there was a cycle of these uh, enchantments. There's probably a red one that I didn't notice. Well, the red one was, yeah, there was definitely a red one. I don't remember what, what it was though. But, um, yeah, this thing is totally sweet. Not much to say about it. It's a, uh, it, it doesn't belong in every deck. There's some decks I wouldn't play this in for sure. Cause it makes your card, it's like a mentor of the meek. But right, like, but instead of but, drawing cards, you're just making them slightly bigger. And and uh, it reminds me of um, God, what was that one card that I Ivy Street Denizen? Sure. But like without the body, and it's cheaper, so it's like it's a little hard to evaluate. Some, like it's good with a lot of servos, and if you have like a potential to kind of go go into a, and if you can hold off their defenses, if you can hold your defense with only a few cards, so you can hold your stuff to get more value out of it later. Then you can more routinely get your stuff. I just think that it sucks that it's not an aggressive card. Yeah, yeah, that it asks you to not play your things and then play your things slowly is not something that creature-based strategies are usually interested in doing. I don't want to be forced already to go to be not uh, aggressive. Like usually, my opponent stops me and I, and I get upset. Yeah. And I, you know, I want to be aggressive. All right, fine, I'll do this. Yeah, but not I'm just, like, not interested. My own decks telling me that, and I'm like, I don't even agree with myself. Yep, agreed. Elegant Edge Crafters, 4GG for a 3-4 with Fabricate 2, cannot be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. So this is another one of those pseudo evasion uh, to get around being chunked by servos for massive creatures. This is a card. Yeah. This is a card. 
This is a crow worm I can get behind. This is a Magic the other card. Yeah, five six that uh, can't be chumped is nothing to sneeze at. Nor is a three four and two servos. Good rate, good card. Plus, it actually makes sense that they're artificers, so that's good. This is like a weird like Benthicore mix, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, like, like this is a, this is a, this is a good this is a great card. Also, Elegant Edge Crafters is the name of the mom and pop shop down the store that sells sewing supplies. Really? Could be. Could be. Fairgrounds Trumpeter. Isn't it Trumpeteer? 2G, 2 2, Elefante. At the a beginning trumpet, of. A trumpeteer. Well, I, I, I'm going to stop you there because this is a really interesting question. No, interrupt me for this very important distinction. Very important. Thank you. Well, I'm serious, though. Trumpeteer and Trumpeter, I, I think they have different meanings, and I'm going to guess what they are instead of looking them up. So I think. I would have preferred if you just guessed, but didn't tell me you were guessing. So I could have believed them. With I like to mix it up a little bit because otherwise I can't be believed. If I, <laughs> I have to mix my life. You got to balance your range. Feel like humility, okay? Balance humility. your range of humility. Humility makes the placebo go down. <laughs> All right. No, I, I, I just think they're different roles. Like, like one's better than the other. I'm just not sure which one's which. Like one's part of a band and one's on his own. Yeah, yeah. A trumpeter is somebody who like plays trumpet, and a trumpeteer is like a specific army <laughs> thing. It's the one guy. It's like it's the Ewok at the end of uh, Return of the Jedi. Yeah. That's a, that's a trumpet. That's a trumpeteer, and a trumpeter is just like part of a band. I like how you went Return of the Jedi, and I was thinking of the opening scene of Duck Soup, where they're all like lined up with the trumpet, tr <laughs> big trumpets in there. <laughs> yeah. Rufus T. Firefly. Um, two, two for three. At the beginning of each end step, if a plus plus one counter was placed on a permanent under your control this turn, put a plus plus one counter on this. So if you fabricate, then you have to choose the slightly worse option to get a slightly small benefit from this one. I'll pass. Not great. Not but, great. But it's not, you know, it's not, you know, I'll, I'll end up playing it, you know, because I drafted black and it didn't work out, so now I'm green red. <laughs> sure. And now I'm playing this. Gear per guide, 2G32. Target, or 2G, target creature you control can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less this turn. Here is a two, is an uncommon three drop I can get behind. This usually costs four mana for a 2-2. Two, two. So it's nice that they really improve yes. the quality. This is also the perfect body of, it's a 3-2. So it can crew, and it is a body that you want to put to use crewing because you don't want to risk it in combat because it has an ability. Yep, super solid. Super good against servos, etc. High Spire Artisan. 2G03 Reach Fabricate 1. Um, yeah, I mean, fine sideboard card probably. I guess you can main deck it. A 1-4 Reach for 3 is not out of the question of unplayability. Four toughness in the air is also really good. There's a lot of. No. I think you're right the first time, but this card's like a card that's like going to be lower on the power level. Yeah, it's pretty you're, low. You're going to play it some percentage of the time as one of the worst cards in your deck, and you're going to board it in a good amount. You're going to play it on turn three a lot and be like kind of depressed. Yeah, hunt the weak. We've seen this one before. Um, relevant things are that it is a fight and not a deal damage, and that plus plus one counters sometimes kind of matter. Right. And that there's a lot of cards in this set that I, that feel like if they don't fabricate, you can hunt the weak for free. What? Fabricate in this set kind of makes you tap out more often. Oh, 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 oh. sure, 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 sure. I'm with you. There's a lot of, there's a lot of cloud goats, which there people are really willing to play because like cloud goats give you that safe feeling where even if I'm tapped out, like what's the worst that can happen? Yeah, if, no, if, I'm with if, you. Then you can hunt the weak on their on the fabricate guy, even if it's like the big version. Sometimes you can just take it all down. It, I think people in general are, will be tapped out more often than usual, especially with those enchantments that make you pay one on your own turn when things come into play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, your mana is just going to be taxed on at sorcery speed. Yep. I want I want to play the card that's the creature of the thing in the Hunt the Week more than the Hunt the Week itself. What, what step, step links, but uh. It's like a golden tusked tiger. Yeah, th this this guy. Uh, he means business. Yeah, this guy slays. <laughs> he slays. Kujar Seed Sculptor one G one two. ETB, what? put a plus plus one counter on target creature you control. Up? This card's the best card I've ever seen. So this is just a 2-3 with huge upside. This is a gold shell beetle. Holy smokes. I remember when Nisa's Chosen was like one of the best green commons. 
Well, it still is of all time. <laughs> you know, uh, you know Elvish Warrior was like, you know, it, it, actually, two threes in Zendikar are really good too. But like in, in Onslaught, it was like specifically like, whoa, yeah, just two threes people in the land four morphs. I mean, we didn't, we didn't even notice that first that it's better than every card in the set. But Jesus, this card is just like gives you so many options. Holy, I, yeah, put it on your flyer or just make a two three for two with it's not even GG, it's one G. This thing is insane. Aaron plus the plus and plus one counters are a thing again. Yeah, I dig it. They Clear, need to do this. Clearly not constructible, but clearly very, very solid uh, role player common. They for limited. <laughs> no, they did not. Larger than life, 1G. Target creature gets plus four, plus four, and gets trampled until on the turn. Sounds great, till you realize it's a sorcery. Mm -hmm. uh, monstrous growth plus trample. If it's if to, to see play, it would need to be one green mana and nothing else that needs it that would change. Then it would be like pretty good. Even then, it yeah. Even then, it's like maybe it might see play. It would have very niche uses. It'd be like a teamier uh, battle rage that like it would serve a different purpose. Yeah, it's, well, it would, it would play with the teamer battle rage. This next card is the best card I've ever seen. All right, so that's to, that brings the total count of best cards Greg's ever seen to about four in Kaladesh. <laughs> the Long Tusk Cub. Hey, this is the thing that was in Hunt the Week. So I was right. Yeah. 1G. Oh, it's a Grizzly Bear. When it deals combat damage to a player, you get two energy. Pay two energy, put a plus plus one counter on it. It won't be small forever. Ain't that the truth? You can just play this on turn four, and it'll. It, in some circumstances, you'll just have like a 5-5. Five five. Yeah. Or if you play it on turn two, it's probably going to get a, a lick in. Yeah. Yeah, this thing's great. And it's good with all the sorcery speed trample stuff if you have like a, a good use for it. Well, I mean, or the red pump spell that is actually playable and great and gets exactly. trample also. This card, if you have like three of this card, even though it's an uncommon, you can justify a lot of bad cards because this card just has some really interesting text on it. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it has that like snowball effect too of like the bigger it gets, the more likely it is to get in, which makes it bigger and. So Compared on. to Slith Predator. Come a long way. Yeah. Nature's Way, 1G, Sorcery. Target creature you control gains Vigilance and Triple on the turn. It deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. Are they, are they sure they wanted to just, like, kind of insult fight like that? It, well, they also just buried the lead. <laughs> like, so hard. Yeah, they're like... They're like oh, like, give it and, some... And do, like, this really... <laughs> You know? Here's some and, things and, that are sometimes worth a fraction of a card, and also one for one removal. You get you get a free ice cream sundae, uh, a buy one give one free ticket to a movie, and four new computers. <laughs> <laughs> you know? you get it. Yeah, this thing is uh, great. It's another one of those weird things where it's like, why why do they have fight and this other thing, and then also constantly put them side by side? Call it super fight, or like, or like, or like punch. You know. Give me, give me a keyword. If you're well, yeah, there's got to be, um, like, prey or, you know, whatever. Like, there, there's... Pounce. There's, pounce. Pounce, there you go. There's got to be some sort of way to do this. Or, if you're just going to have the two abilities, don't put them in the same set right next to each other over and over. If, 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 if a creature does damage in this way, it gets first, it gets trample and vigilance. You know, after it does damage, it gets proud and, and, and like, <laughs> give it some flavor. Yeah, yeah. That's, I'm, that's nature's way. Uh, it is nature's way. I, I, can't, I can't get behind the burying the lead in the text box. It's, All right, here's a big one. Nisa, Vital Force, 3GG, 5 loyalty with a plus 1. So it's a six, potentially 6 loyalty for 5 mana, which is a whole lot. Untap target land you control until your next turn. It becomes a 5-5 five, five elemental creature with haste. It's still a land. Thanks for the haste, so we don't have to misclick on Moto anymore. Yeah, that's that's become a better practices type thing. They just put that on all those now because um, people fucked up with cough too much. Uh, neg 3, return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Okay. Because all they want to do is make insane raised deads and then, like, raised deads that can get back other raised deads. Like, this thing can just get itself back, like, get a, the other Nisa back. Yeah. Uh, and then the ultimate is just Neg 6, so just the turn after you play it, you get an emblem. So this comes down, plus is the next turn you get an emblem that they can't deal with, and it says whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. Horn of Greed. It's only, you get a rebate of one mana, too, which I think is important. 
Like it's like Chandra or or Garug or or Kiora. Like this card or really cost. costs four mana. Yeah. Like, and if so, if you have, if you have any one mana instants in your deck, this card legitimately costs four mana. Yeah, it costs it costs five mana sources and four mana potentially. Yeah, which allows you to do some really interesting stuff. Like if you have a, you know both both bolt and path in your deck, and you have like the land that can let you do this, like. That rebate is meaningful, but yeah. the rebate will be meaningful all the time. But I always like to really respect the rebate until it proves to be irrelevant. Yep. Uh, I mean, the ultimate is just insane, um, and I like th I like that it is not just win the game, but I dislike that it is a turn two thing. I, um, I, I don't mind that it's a may, but I feel like maybe like it wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't a may and like the tension is i don't know i just i never know where i land emotionally on may versus not may on abilities where it doesn't matter but you feel like someone should get punished one time for this <laughs> sure like magpie was this way right if you have 19 cards in a, you have 19 cards in your library and they're at 20 you just can't win like that was just funny yeah you know no i agree but it, it is what it is not a huge deal i just i don't like the the things that like the planeswalkers that play like sorceries too much the ones that like come down and ultimate right away or the ones that like this one like a plus one that doesn't really affect the board in a long-term manner and then ultimate the next turn is like you're you're playing a sorcery like it's not a planeswalker at that point um which i which i think is actually like you know it, 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 uh, not to say that this feels like a sorcery but if if they did that and like kind of made it seem like more of a sorcery for whatever reason like the flavor of it felt like it was like a spartan that like went really bright and went out like, right yeah somebody is being I, a pariah I, I, or whatever I'm or a martyr that way. yeah if somebody was martyring themselves but like the gideon that minuses for the glorious anthem like that thing is just a sorcery like it's not which is odd yeah anyway um the raise that is great it can get back this thing or other things that get back other things so you can get that grindhouse going and the plus one is great for mm -hmm. A couple reasons. Number one, it wins the game real fast. Number two, Greg already went over. You can actually use the mana. Number three, it is very good at protecting itself, um, which, you know, five mana Planeswalker, you really want it to be able to protect itself. And this thing does so quite well because it's not like Koth where it's until EOT. The thing stays, a, the land stays a five, five creature until your next turn. So you can activate it and then leave it back to block to defend your Nisa. And the last thing I have to say about it is that the plus is very good against other planeswalkers. Because this thing is basically like a reality smasher. Like it's a 5-5 five, five haste for 5. So they play their like Chandra uh, plus it. Uh, and specifically this thing lines up really well against Chandra. Because they play it on 4, plus it for mana and kill your only creature to defend it. Then you slam this thing, eat Chandra for free, and have a 6 loyalty planeswalker in play ready to ultimate. The only thing it's missing is Vigilance and Trample. <laughs> like every other card you said. Yeah, Nisa I'm, is... I'm, is... I'm talking on the Planeswalker. I mean, they were, you know, just... Right, yeah. Through. Yeah, just put it in the art somewhere, like... <laughs> the words Vigilance and Trample. Um, yeah, so the, this Planeswalker is very good and contextually even better. Any more on Nisa? Greg? Uh, no, I, I think we've, we've really said it all. All right. Ornamental Courage. G, instant, untapped target creature gets plus one, plus three until on a turn. Sure, I'm on board. Like we were saying before, if it's one mana and, and can kill a, and can make it so your guy now kills their guy and survives, it's kind of like a 1.5 for one yeah. like, in a weird way. And then the tempo of untapping and one mana puts it over the top so that like if you don't have a combat trick, you will play this card. The yep. reason why you're not going to play this card is because you have better combat tricks. Which I think is going to be pretty hard because this one's real good. Yeah, um, tapping too for one mana is like... Yeah, the untap is huge, right? Because it, it makes it so that you don't have to be like, well, if I attack, they just won't block and we'll enter this race and I'll be behind. But if I stay back, they won't attack and then I don't get to use my mana and card. And the untap gives you best of both worlds. Um, the plus one, plus three is a weird stat line, but, it, you know, it's, that's good. Like, I, li I like it when it's not just every single trick is always exactly plus two, plus two, you know? Uh, mixing it up is really cool. Um, and the only other thing I have to say about it is that untapping can also be good against things like tappers or pressure point or the trap door, trap deadbolt lock, trap crewing, uh, crewing, um, the sleep paralysis thing. Like there's a bunch of things that are, it's got a, it's got a, a crewing interest. <laughs> yeah. Untapping is good. It's a good trick. 
Uh, Ovia Pashiri. None of it, it does, does nothing like what you think it does. So here's Life Crafter. Yeah, I saw the, the Facebook thread on this. Uh, it's a 1-2 for 1 legendary artificer. 2G tap, create a servo. Okay. 4G tap, create an XX colorless construct artifact creature token where X is the number of creatures you control. Question. <laughs> yeah. The wording on this second card is very weird, and multiple pros who have been playing the game for 20 years all argued for, like, two hours on what this XX actually counts. I think judges got it wrong. I didn't join in, even though I was kind of excited, because I... I knew I'd get it wrong. Myself, but because I didn't literally... I literally did not know. Yeah, me neither. So, like, as, as it turns out, the way it actually works is, and, and you you can, you can disagree if you want, and I don't blame you if you do. <laughs> so does a lot of people. The XX creature does not change at all. You know, it comes into play as what it is, and that's that. And it does that's fairly not... intuitive, because it's asterisk... It's not asterisk, asterisk, it's XX, right? So and that it's makes sense. on itself. So, like, if you put into play with only this guy in play, then it's a 1-1, one, one, not a 2-2. Two, two. Like, and, like, I would expect it for it to count itself, but it does not count itself. Which is, like, weird. Yes. Very weird. Which means if you activate it and they kill this guy in response, you get nothing. Nassing! Uh, yeah, it's a weird card. Pretty good. Probably not constructible, but definitely uh, close to bomb-worthy and limited. And there are uh, a lot of weird different types of, like, construct artifact creature tokens, or just artifact creature tokens. Between servo stopters, the the beast thing, this thing, like there's like four more. It's pretty annoying. It's probably why they forgot to put energy in this set. There's just too many different artifact things. Oops. Whoopsie. Pima Outrider, 2GG33 three, three, Trample Fabricate 1. Common. Common 4-4 four, four, Trample for 4. With Pretty upside. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Not too shabby. I can never leave behind. Not too shabby. I mean, this is like Wing Splicer with, like, the biggest upside I've seen in a long time. Yeah, this thing is really, really strong, and... Holy shit. It's absurd that, like, the, the power creep of, like, this mid-range creatures have gotten to the point where this is just okay to print a common. Like, Liz, Liz Alana uh, Huntmaster, or whatever, the one that made elf tokens? Yeah. It, you know, it could be better than this, you know, in that format, just the nature of things, but it didn't feel like this does. Yeah. Like, this card feels like... Come on, guys. Yeah. It's a common. It's yeah. A common. Just, it's you know, absurd. Don't don't just give it to us so easily. And or it have two blockers. Whatever you'd like. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. Yeah, it's absurd. Uh, three GG four four trample ETB get uh two energy when it attacks you can pay two. If you do it gets plus two plus two until end of turn. So this is like the thriving things, but it's until end of turn but it's plus two plus two instead of a counter. So you definitely um, get a six six trample hit in once. Uh, but which is probably five enough. Five minute four fours though have been out of favor on the on the on the defense. Yes. Like for a long time. So but but four toughness is not shabby in the set for other reasons. Also true. I think that I don't want to play this card if I can avoid it. I agree. Unless there's some weird green energy thing where like I just want one more thing that makes energy. This thing yeah. is a, a can fill a slot. The energy would be the take for it. Like, if I would play a card that was like a 3-5 for 4 that, that gives energy, I'd probably pro probably be in the market for a card like this as well. Yes, exactly. But if I'm just playing a deck with a curve and, like, if I have energy, cool, then this card is, like, on the end of cards that, like, I'll play it, but, like, I'm not, like, super thrilled about it. Yeah. Numot Dingus makes a very good point in the chat. Why does this, like, Apex Predator of the Forest, uh, like, Big Cat, have Trample instead of First Strike? But, but you know why? Because... Because it's green? They give things in the forest to trample. That's just, that's, that, I mean, if, if you want to answer, that's it. They give things in the forest to trample. They don't give things in the forest for Yeah, but, but, you know, this is a, this is a jungle cat. But they don't give things in the forest first strike. They just don't. Okay, well, are you saying that jungles and forests are the same thing? Miri was a worldly creature. And they had it first strike. That's it. Greg, fight me IRL. Die. <laughs> Just die. <laughs> uh, Sage of Shyla's Claim. Goblin Piker, ETB, get three energy. Super good rate and super unimpressive body with, in the land of servos, but you'll play it for the energy. Well, this next card is so much better. It's, it, I love this card. I think this card is uh, constructive worthy. All card. right. Uncommon. 
Grizzly Bear, Servant of the Conduit, ETB, Get to Energy, Tap, Pay to Energy, Bird of Paradise? It's fucked up, this card. This card's outrageous. That's what I said. <laughs> it's the best card I've ever seen. This card's definitely constructible. Absolutely. It, it, and this is like the, like the, you know, they've never printed the card this good before. Like, it, at what this does specifically. Like, you know, they- It reminds me of the steward, the 2-2 the two, two, uh, Vigilance for GW that yeah, tapped that to add a green. Yeah, that was come. That uh, thing, like, and that thing like saw a good amount of play and like ramp is better now. This thing fixes your mana and you can use the energy in other ways. And wow, this thing's great. Yeah, this is a, this is a 10, 10 out of 10 though. Uncommon? It's Uncommon. Really, that's generous. This that's, and the Tendo that's, Ice Bridge. Is, is a, that's, if there's an olive branch to be had in this set, this is one of them. Yeah, this thing and Tendo at Uncommon. They're being real generous. They did not need to do that, and they did it anyway. They were being nice. Yeah, so kind of them. Takedown. G, Sorcery. Four damage to target creature with flying, or one damage to each creature with flying. Eh. Yeah, cyborg, whatever. I like that it, that it kills Thopters and leaves Servos, like it's a Servos' last revenge. Yeah. You know, revenge of the Servos. <laughs> I'd watch that movie. Good, good, you know, you know, maybe you should have been flying, you know, maybe you shouldn't have been so fucking smart. Yeah. Uh, Thriving Rhino, so that cat was not the Thriver. This is a 2-3 three for 3, uh, ETB, get 2 energy, when it attacks, you can put a counter on it for 2 energy. I don't like that it costs 3 mana, even though the stats are insane. I was gonna say, the stat line is so much better than the, but, uh, but the like 2 the one. Drops of this, ver this, this card with as a 2 drop or a 1 drop is just so much better than this card as a 3 drop, given the nature of its ability. Yeah. That said, the stats are insane, so who cares? Yep, super good. Verterous Gear Hulk, 5 mana, 4-4, four, four, Trample. ETB, distribute 4 plus plus 1 counters among any number of target creatures you control. Oh, cool. So, 8-8, eight, eight, Trample, or, or, um, sort of like three quarters of a wolf or silver hurt. You know, when I was younger, I had to I had to wait a whole turn for my spectral force to untap. <laughs> okay. I had to play silver Squid Ranger just to have a just to have a chance of it untap. <laughs> All right, and this this guy just just fucking pisses on everybody's grave. Yeah, I've had enough. Yeah, this thing pisses on is its grave and is still like not going to see play. Absolutely not. <laughs> four, four mana 1919s, I've, I've said before. Like two yeah, yeah, it's just like not even a card. Would never see play. Yeah. So absurd. This one even gets shattered. You kidding me? Yeah, come on. Uh, Wild Wanderer, 3G, 3-2. ETB, search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped. I thought it was going to be the hand. Eh, it's a oh, fine card. I prefer Andu, uh, Andu Druid. Yeah, me too. Uh, Wildest Dreams, XXG, return X target cards from your graveyard to your hand, exile it. So it's regrowth for one more with kicker, with multi-kicker to, yeah, that's what it is. It's, it's better than restock. That, that's re that's the, the lesson here. Yeah, I mean, restock is has been kind of outclassed a couple times now. <laughs> better than Elvin Cash Money, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, this thing's good. I mean... Uh, fucking Seasons Past is still better, but for now, but uh, this thing is uh, definitely something that could see some amount of play for at some point. If it has a home, it'd be, it's going to be a strange home. Yes, agreed. Like a Weird Harvest kind of thing. Yeah, uh, Weird Harvest was the exact thing I was thinking. It's just like, there's going to be some weird combo deck that can use this. Like, you can fucking find it because it's only one mana, but it really is some uh, seven uh, drop uh, thing, you know. Yeah. Transmute Dizzy Spell and get... Yeah, yeah exactly. There's going to be something there. Wily Bander, 1-1 one, one for 1, 2G, gains indestructible until end of turn. Boo. Although I do like Cat Monkey. This is probably, like, the best card to to teach a teachable lesson to a newer player that reads this and think this thinks this card's, like, far stronger than it appears. Because this card doesn't appear bad at first glance because the ability of indestructible kind of, like, occurs as a very, very strong... Uh, kind of more power than almost any other ability ability when yeah. really it's kind of like lackluster and, and whatever Yeah, uh, and so like I always like this is the examples like this and uh, creatures with like regeneration that are like two twos for two Like it's sometimes it's good to be like just because it can't die doesn't mean it's good at what it does. Yep You are absolutely spot-on